Hello everybody, in uh, this screencast, uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, give a Java review and uh, in this Java review, I'll review some uh, important uh, object-oriented programming concepts that we will require for uh, our mobile application development course. Uh, a lot of the material that is being presented here has been uh, 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 used or uh, borrowed from uh, the uh, Oracle uh, Java tutorial available at the link uh, the reference or the link below uh, so let's talk about uh, object-oriented programming so object-oriented programming Java is an object-oriented programming language and uh, this means that the Java world is constructed uh, with objects and these objects represent objects from the real world and you could see that one of the very common ones is an object in the real world say a car in that case we need to create uh, an, a, an equivalent object uh, in the java world which is a car and so on uh, so basically uh, object oriented uh, programming um, the concept is that there are classes and these classes have methods and attributes and these attributes are uh, uh, properties uh, of uh, the, co the, 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 uh, the, the concept that you're trying to define and the methods or the functions are uh, capabilities uh, or they are functions that operate on this, these attributes so the class itself is a blueprint of uh, the individual object that you would like to create it it is a blueprint okay and uh, as we just indicated that in, in java, uh, uh, classes in java have methods like functions and they have fields like attributes or properties that define this class now the class is the blueprint if you bring the class to life if you instantiate the class this creates an object okay so for example i have a class definition here of a bicycle and you could see that we have two attributes we have the speed attribute an integer and we have the gear which is also an integer and then you have methods for example we have the change gear you have the speed up you have the apply the brakes and you have the print what is the state of your bicycle so far okay so that is a definition of this is the class definition of a bicycle okay now if i create uh, uh, i would like now to create an instance of that class so and to instantiate the class and we use the new keyword so for example i could say bicycle bike one equals new bicycle okay in that case i created a new bicycle similarly i can create bike two and then i can call the methods using the dot mutation i could say bike one dot speed up and I can specify the parameter which is 10 and you could see that speed up requires some kind of a parameter and it gets added to the speed similarly I can call the change gear and I can print the state I can do the same uh, idea with regard to bike 2 so now uh, what we have seen is that this is how you create a class okay which is you create a class and you give it a name and you open bracket and then you close bracket at the bottom here and then you have parameters and then methods and so on um, another thing to remember is that class names have to be capitalized method names are not capitalized they start, they start with lowercase okay uh, similarly attributes usually are lowercase unless they are constants in that case we will have them as uppercase okay so the class class methods what to remember what 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 we need to know about them they are functions inside classes and they contain code or actions or functions that a class can perform each method has a signature now this signature is defined by the method name and the parameter types of the method the return value is not included in the in the method signature so the method signature is the method name and the parameter types okay so for example if you have a method that looks like this say for example calculate answer it returns double and it has a double wingspan comma an integer number of engines comma double length and a double 
uh, gross tons. Basically, the signature of this method is the name of the method and the, the parameter types. This is the method signature, okay? So now, why are we talking about method signature is because we want to talk about method overloading. So method overloading is a class can have a method with the same name repeated multiple times if and only if it has a different signature. Each one of them has a different signature. So methods can have the same name, but they cannot have the same signature. So if they have the same name, the only thing that is left to distinguish them signature wise is the parameter list. Okay. So you can have methods with the same name, but they cannot have the same parameter types. Okay. So this is called overloading. So for example, in Java programming language, it supports overloading where the Java can distinguish between methods using the, the different method signatures. So for example, methods within a class can have the same name if they have different parameter lists. So for example, you can have a class, say we call it data artist and you have draw, 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 a lot of draw, but you see this draw, the parameter list is a string. This draw, the parameter list is an integer. This draw, the parameter list is a, is a double. Similarly, this draw, the parameter list is an integer double. Okay, none of them has the same exact parameter list, but all of them have the same name. This is called method overloading. Now, another thing to remember about classes is the constructor. So, as the name implies, the constructor is used when you invoke a class to generate an, an object, to create an object of that class, you use the constructor. Okay, so the constructor is what get, what gets called to actually construct or to invoke or to uh, 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 um, instantiate a class. Okay, so w w the constructor is a method, looks like any other method. However, it has specific properties. One, the method name is equal to the class name. Okay, so one, the name of the class, it has exactly the same name as the class. Okay, that's one. Two, it has no return type. Okay, so it is uh, the name, uh, exactly the same name as the class, and it has no return type. Okay, so for example, you have a bicycle here. I created a simple constructor, and you could see here public, and then bicycle, no return type. Okay, and then it has some parameters, the, the start gear and uh, the start speed and the start gear. And I could say gear equal to start gear and speed. So the, here I am a instantiating or initializing gear and speed. Okay. So now if you want to create a new bicycle, you say bicycle, bike, uh, bike one equals new bicycle. And then you are using the constructor, which requires two parameters, the, the speed and the gear. Okay. Similarly, bike two, new bicycle, we'll use new keyword, new bicycle, 10 and two and so on. Okay. So this is a constructor, very simple idea. Now, what are member variables? So there are several kinds of variables here. So member variables in a class uh, are also called fields. Okay, so these are member variables or variables in a method or a block of code. These are called local variables. And then variables in method declarations are called parameters. Okay, these are the different kinds uh, of variables that we can have. Now, you also have something called an access modifier, which uh, uh, the, the first leftmost modifier used, uh, to, to, which lets you to control what uh, other classes have access to the, uh, the member fields. Uh, some very uh, popular ones are the public and private. Okay, so public, as the name implies, makes uh, uh, a field accessible from all other classes because it's public private does not make these fields accessible outside the class where this field exists so it's not accessible from outside classes it's only accessible within its own class public private okay so now also another interesting keyword is called the this keyword and as the name implies this is a keyword that is used to refer to the current object so if you have if, for example, inside a method, inside a method, inside a specific object, you would like to refer to that current object, you will use the this keyword. And um, 
I have a simple example. You can refer to any member uh, of the current uh, object from within an instance of the method or uh, in the constructor by using the this keyword. Okay. So for example, I have a point uh, class and you can see there is an X and a Y and this is the constructor int a comma int b so you have two integers and i could just say x equal a y equal b and we know that this x refers to this x but what if i used this keyword i could do this i could say this dot x so this dot x refers to the instance of uh, the, the 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 object okay or the this current object i'm saying to this x so i'm referring to this x this dot y which is this y all right okay so this is what this this keyword so this keyword returns the instance the the object instance okay the current object then you also have another keyword which is called the static keyword so now um the static variables and static methods are defined at the class level they are not defined at the object level meaning that they are uh, defined they are shared among all the objects of that class okay so static variable so static methods which have the static modifier and should be invoked using the class name without the need of creating an instance of the class so to refer to these methods use the class name dot the method name or the class name dot the parameter name and these values or these methods are or, or these attributes or these methods are are defined at the class level not at the object level okay so for example i can declare a static a static uh, method for example i could say public static double get distance so this actually gets you the square root of distance so if you give me a point it gets you how far that point is from the origin or from the zero zero location and uh, it uses the square root of uh, the square of x plus the square of y it's a very simple uh, equation to get the distance from zero from the zero th um, from the origin now to actually call this method you don't need to create an instance of the point instead you can do the following you could say point dot get distance and you could say see point is the name of the class and then i can call the method so i pass it some point it returns back to me some kind of the distance from the origin of that point does that make sense okay so we have seen what is static static is very important because in some cases you have a variable or a, a method that you would like to be accessible through the class uh, um, the class through the class itself so you want it to be defined at the class level and it can be used without actually instantiating that class at the same time you can have a variable or a parameter that is declared as static it is accessible uh, uh, from uh, uh, by using the class name and at the same time it is shared across all uh, the instantiations of that class so all the objects will share that value okay you can also declare things as constants usually constants you thought you give a, they are given a, you use the modifier which is final so for example the static modifier in combination with the final modifier is also used to define constants the final modifier indicates that the value of this field cannot change so for example if you want to define pi you'd say static final double the type is double pi equals and you, this is the number pi okay so that is we looked at the static modifier now inheritance so to look at inheritance uh, we will use a bicycle example so for example um, some objects have certain properties or certain uh, information or, or certain uh, functionalities that are common with each other okay for example mountain bikes road bikes tandem bikes for example all share characteristics of bicycles for example they all have the current speed they all have the current gear and so on so and at the end of the day they're all bikes right so there to organize this usually um we declare a class that class defines the basic bike properties and functionalities and that becomes the the parent and then 
you can extend these functionalities to create children of that parent which have other functionalities however they inherit the basic properties from the parent okay so you can also define additional features that make them different for example you have the tandem bike has two seats and two sets of handlebars and the road bikes have drop handlebars and some mountain bikes have additional chain rings and uh, um, giving them a lower gear ratio and so on so you can have uh, they are all bikes but you can extend their functionality okay so uh, in object-oriented programming allows classes to inherit commonly used state and behavior from other classes okay and to do that is for example uh, um, you have a bicycle class uh, which is a super class or it is the parent and it has children which is mountain bike road bike and tandem bike what does this mean is that the bicycle has the basic functionality of a bicycle and then you can extend this functionality to be a mountain bike extend this functionality to be a road bike extend it to be a tandem bike now in 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 in, in java the uh, the child class has access to uh, uh, the um, uh, to, to the attributes, the public and public, public attributes and public methods of the parent class. Okay. There is also one thing you have to note is that each uh, class can have a single parent. Okay. So a child class can have only one parent cannot have more than one parent however uh, a super class can have a lot of children like for example in this example you could see that the bicycle is the parent and it has a lot of children the children are the mountain bike the road bike and the tandem bike okay so this is inheritance so let's delve into this in more details so how do you how does a class declare that it is a child or it extends another class we use the extends keyword and so after you declare the class then you say this class extends and then you refer to the parent class okay so for example you could say mountain bike extends bicycle okay and in that case what you are declaring here is that this mountain bike inherits all the the public and public methods and public attributes of the bicycle class now so we mentioned that uh, classes can be derived from other classes and thereby inheriting fields and methods from those classes um, a class that is derived from another class it's called a subclass or it's called a derived class or an extended class or a child class now the class from which the subclass is de defined or de derived it's called a super class or it's called the base class or it's called the parent class now um, um, now if you don't have a superclass so say for example when you created bicycle bicycle has no uh, superclass however there is a default superclass which is the object class capital o object class okay now that is called the so uh, in the absence of any other explicit superclass every class is implicitly a, a subclass of an object class okay so now as uh, classes can be derived from other classes that can be derived from other classes and so on ultimately the topmost class is the object class so the, the 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 object class is at the top okay so now the idea is very very simple and uh, what is very powerful uh, so uh, um, what you can do is that if you want to extend the functionality of a specific class all what you can do is just extend it meaning that you create a big create a child of uh, that class or a subclass of that class so uh, this enables you to reuse fields, reuse methods of an existing class without having to rewrite the code and re-debug re it. So uh, avoids a lot of copy paste and so on, right? So uh, you just inherit all the fields and the nested uh, methods and the, nest the methods and the nested classes from the superclass. Now you have to note that the constructors 
are not members so you will the, the subclass inherits all members okay uh, meaning that fields methods and nested classes from its superclass however the constructor is constructors are not members okay so they will not be inherited by the superclass um but the uh, so when the child will not inherit the constructor of the superclass however the superclass can still be invoked and we will see how can it be invoked actually there is the super method the super uh, keyword that you can use using the super keyword it enables you to invoke the uh, the constructor of the parent class okay so to give you an idea of what is going to happen is that basically um if a class extends another class okay so say for example mountain bike extends bicycle what's going to happen is when you create a mountain bike what you are actually doing is that initially you will create a bicycle and then that bicycle will be extended to be uh, a mountain bike so basically a mountain bike is a bicycle but it has some extra uh, extensions meaning it can have other parameters extra parameters or it can have uh, other methods and so on but at the end of the day it still has access to the parent methods okay so for example this is a bicycle you could see the bicycle has a speed and the gear an integer speed and integer gear it has this is the constructor of the bicycle you have also some methods okay now I what I can do is I could say create a mountain bike that extends a bicycle okay because it extends a bicycle inside the mountain bike I still have access to speed and gear and all these methods okay by just calling them by their name and now I create a constructor for the mountain bike mountain bike mountain bike and then the constructor has uh, speed start height start speed and start gear and basically using the start um, the start speed and the start gear I will use the super keyword the super keyword enables me to refer to the bicycle which is the parent of the mountain bike so I say super start speed comma start gear so I'm calling the constructor of the mount the, the bicycle itself and the constructor needs a speed and a start gear and as you can see here I set the new parameter which is the seat height seat height equals seat height which is being or the start height that's being passed here and note also that the mountain bike has access to set height so it has a new uh, method it's called set height this method only exists at the mountain bike level however if you think about it the bicycle has a lot of other methods so these methods are accessible also to the mountain bike so what if what if the the mountain bike does not uh, like or it wants to extend or to have another implementation of speeding up and to do that it can just simply declare another method for speed up it say, could say void speed up and so on uh, uh, increment and in that case it can increment it by say double the speed for example so the mountain bike can actually overload so so, so uh, override sorry it can override the a method that is declared in the superclass okay so once you over override a method that is declared in the superclass this becomes your default method but if you want access to the super uh, or the method at the parent class use the super keyword so for example you have a super class say it has a very simple class we call it super class and it has a print method now i can declare a subclass which extends the super class okay extends this guy and i have my own print method so i have declared public void print method which is exactly the same as same uh, signature as this so you see public void print method and then i could say super dot print method so super dot print method refers to this print method now also i could do system dot print line so now if you do this it will print two lines if you just call this method you will print two lines the first line is printed from superclass and then printed from subclass now to actually instantiate the subclass is very easy you just say subclass s equals new subclass okay and then you say s dot print method when you say s dot print method it actually calls this method and then this method calls the super which is this method and then it prints this line very very simple the the super keyword enables you to actually access um, um, pa pa parameters and methods 
uh, that usually are uh, uh, overridden. Okay. Now, um, another idea with uh, inheritance, if you look here, uh, we go back to the bicycle example. So this is bicycle and you have mountain bike extends bicycle. And as you can see that um, uh, the seat height or set height, I think this, this slide is just an e extension uh, or it's a repetition. So we'll skip that slide. Now, now I want you to, to, to remind you that a mountain bike, you know, from this example, a mountain bike actually is a bicycle it is an extended bicycle mountain bike extends bicycle so now to the system a mountain bike is a bicycle but think about it is a bicycle a mountain bike it's not right because a mountain bike has more functionalities than the bicycle itself however the mountain bike is a bicycle okay so this gets us to the idea of upcasting so now the mountain bike extends a bicycle now the cast operator because because the mountain bike is a bicycle you could say you could have a parameter that is of bicycle type and that parameter you can set it to a mountain bicycle or you can it can refer to a mountain bicycle why because a bicycle is a mountain bike okay so the cast operator is not needed to convert a mountain bike to a bicycle. Because why? Because a mountain bike is a bicycle. After all, the mountain bike is at least a bicycle. Um, so this assignment is called upcasting because you are implicitly casting up the hierarchy from mountain bike to a subclass to the bicycle superclass. So after you do the upcasting, the problem is when you upcast a mountain bike to a bicycle you cannot call mount the mountain bikes set height method because it is not part of the bicycle 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 interface see the set height as let me remind you again so the set height the set height method exists at the mountain bicycle level okay so if you upcast meaning you take a mountain bicycle you change it into a bicycle or you cast it into a bicycle in that case it's a bicycle it's not a mountain bike you lose access to these methods so for example we created a mountain bicycle say mountain bike mb equal new mountain bike so this creates a new mountain bicycle right i could say bicycle b equal mb no casting required why because mb which is the mountain which is a mountain bike the mountain bike its parent is a bicycle or its 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 super class is a bicycle Thus, I could say bicycle B equal MB. Okay. Now we will go over this in our uh, in, in in another screencast that actually goes over some kind of how we can do this in Eclipse, and uh, it will demo to show how upcasting works and so on. But this is uh, uh, in this lecture we are just going over the basic concepts. Okay. Another idea that uh, we would like to investigate is interfaces. So. Um, now, an interface uh, is a reference type similar to a class that contains no constants. It only contains, it only contains constants, method signatures, and nested types. So basically, an interface is like a description of potential uh, uh, methods and, and uh, nested types and constants. Okay. So the methods have no bodies, as you could see, and interfaces cannot be instantiated. You cannot say, you cannot instantiate an interface. So basically to actually use the interface, it has to be implemented, okay? The interface is used in a lot of patterns and one of the very interesting ones is, for example, a mechanism to declare how to communicate with me. For example, you have a device, it wants, for example, that uh, to communicate with it, it expects you to implement a specific interface. For example, you have a printer. The printer declares to communicate with the printer, this is how you communicate with me. For example, you have to implement this interface and that interface has a method called print, has a method called check status, for example. And the interface describes what are these methods. It just describes what are these methods, meaning is what are the signatures of these methods what does the method uh, what is the method is going to return what are what's the method name and what are the parameters of this method 
and whoever wants to communicate with the printer has to implement that interface okay so they can only be implemented by classes so this is an example you have a very simple interface say this interface is called drawable and it has two methods declared draw has one parameter called color and int and then the other one is set position double x and double y now to actually implement the interface is pretty simple you could say public you create a class say point that implements drawable now to be able to implement drawable this point class has to have two methods the first method is draw and this is its signature and it has to have another one called set position okay now let's ignore this public um, to string uh, uh, issue we'll talk about it actually this is not implementing an interface uh, this is the, the this method is actually part of uh, it is um, overriding the to string method for the object class you see the point has no parent however its parent is the object class and the object class has a method called to string and we are overriding it here this override uh, annotation or add uh, override this is added by uh, eclipse and i will show you how this is done it's, this is very uh, simple to do in eclipse so the take home message is that the point class implements the drawable interface and the drawable interface has two methods and you could see here the first method the second method and this is the implementation of the first method and this is the implementation of the second method another concept that i would like to discuss are abstract classes very very similar to interfaces however they are classes these classes have some methods that have some body so some methods that are implemented and have methods that are declared as abstract and these methods that need to be implemented to instantiate an abstract class to declare an abstract class it's just declared as abstract an abstract class now these abstract classes cannot be instantiated however they have to be extended if you want to use an abstract class you have to extend it and when you extend an abstract class what is required from you or from the class that extends that abstract class is to implement all the abstract methods okay so now let's see an example here i have declared an abstract class you could see here that there is uh, it's called a graphic object okay and you could see that the move to uh, method is actually uh, uh, declared and actually implemented you could see here that it, it there is code it has some body but then there are two methods at the bottom here abstract draw and abstract resize these are abstract a methods and you can see here it's an abstract class now how to extend it it's very simple it's like extending any other class you say class this is a class and then this is circle extends a graphic object okay this means that the circle now extends it so it has access to the move to and to the xy parameters now it has to implement or, or uh, to implement the abstract methods and one of them is void draw and void resize you include whatever code you need and so on okay so we have covered some of the interesting topics we looked at a very high overview overview of object oriented programming and uh, the concepts that we need uh, uh, from object oriented in uh, to actually pr proceed in uh, our mobile application course i hope uh, you, you enjoyed uh, the screencast and i hope um, that if you have any questions please email me at uh, uh, my email that is posted on uh, the course website thank you